Here's our setup for the rotational inertia lab. I've got my laptop and my interface to connect my sensors and I have here a lazy Susan turntable that I can create a torque on it with a string by attaching it to the side of the table. So I can wind up the string and hang it over this pulley and now when I attach a weight to the pulley now there's tension in the string the tension pulls at the edge of the disc a distance R away producing a torque and when I release it it rotates the table so what I'll do first is I'll do an experiment to measure the rotational inertia of the table then we'll add objects to the table and we'll repeat the experiment and then we'll measure the rotational inertia of everything and then when we have that we will subtract out the rotational inertia of the table by itself and we'll be left with the rotational inertia of the object that was on the turntable and then we'll compare that value of rotational inertia that we get experimentally with the values that are predicted in table 10-2 and we'll see how close we come. This sensor right here is called a smart pulley. And what it does is there are spokes in the, in the wheel and right here is an LED light that as the spokes pass by the light, they block the light or allow the light through. And based on how quickly the light is flashing to the sensor, it knows how fast this wheel is spinning. So therefore we can measure the velocity of the string as it passes over the pulley. Which of course, if we can measure the velocity of the string as it moves over the pulley, that's also the velocity of the edge of the table. So we can measure the tangential velocity of the platform. And if we can measure it over time and see how much it's changing, then we can figure out using the slope of the velocity time graph we can figure out the tangential acceleration of the table. So what we'll do is we'll wind up our string, hang the weight over the pulley, start our data collection and we will release the table and now we'll have data measuring the velocity as a function of time. We'll use the acceleration that we measure to figure out what the tension in the string is and once we know the tension in the string I know that is my perpendicular force at the edge of the turntable which is some distance r away. I'll be able to measure that distance r with my meter stick and therefore the force and the radius I'll be able to calculate the torque. Once I know the torque then I can relate the torque to the moment of inertia and the angular acceleration of the disk through Newton's second law of angular motion. Torque is equal to I times alpha. I can rearrange that equation to say that the moment of inertia is equal to torque divided by alpha. Then I'll use my experimental values that I measured for torque and angular acceleration to come up with the moment of inertia of the turntable plus the object. All right, this is the rotational inertia pre-lab activity. Number one, assuming that the string does not slip, algebraically determine the equation needed to calculate the angular acceleration alpha of the turntable in terms of the radius of the turntable r and a, the falling masses acceleration, which is also the tangential acceleration of the turntable. Okay, number one. So I know that AT is equal to R alpha. So therefore, alpha is equal to AT divided by R. Where AT is the tangential acceleration of the turntable. That's what I'll be measuring with my smart pulley. And R is the radius of the turntable. Number two. Draw a force diagram of the falling mass M and determine the algebraic equation for the tension T in the string in terms of m 
g and the acceleration a of the mass. Okay. So there is our mass, our falling mass m. There is the string pulling up on it with tension t. And there is gravity pulling down on it with the force of the mass's weight, which is mg. And I know the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. I'm going to let the direction of the motion be the positive direction. So that means mg is in the positive direction and minus t, which is in the negative direction, equals mass times acceleration. So that means my tension in the string then will be mg minus ma, or the tension in the string will be mass g minus a. This is the hanging mass. This is 9.8, and this is the tangential acceleration of the wheel, also the acceleration of the falling mass. Number three, write the equation for the torque produced on the turntable by the string in terms of tension and turntable radius r. So here's our turntable. It has radius r, and the string will be passing over the pulley like that. And while it's accelerating, remember, the tension in the string is not equal to the weight. The tension in the string is equal to the weight minus the term ma. So that's what we found right here. So that value is the tension in the string, and it is pulling on the edge of the turntable at radius r, producing a torque. Torque is equal to the perpendicular force times the radius. We see here that the tension is perpendicular to the radius, so this just becomes the tension times the radius of the disc is equal to the torque from the string. Number four, Newton's second law for angular motion is sum of torques is equal to I alpha. Our net torque consists of two torques, one from the tension in the string and one from the opposing force of friction. This leads to our equation, the net torque is equal to I alpha. But we just decided the net torque is the sum of the torque from the string, which will be a positive torque, because the direction of the motion is what we'll call the positive direction. And then the torque from friction opposes that, so we'll so it's in the negative direction, and we'll call it torque sub friction. Solve the equation in step four for T string. Okay, so the tension in the string then. The torque in the string is equal to I alpha plus the torque from friction. Okay. Number six, look at your equation from step five. If we let T string be our dependent Y variable and let alpha be our independent X variable, identify the shape of the graph we should get from this equation. Okay, so if you look at this, this really is, we're going to let the torque from the string be our Y variable. And our alpha is going to be our x variable. And we see this is in the form of y equals mx plus b. So we're going to make a graph then with the torque from the string on the y-axis, angular acceleration alpha on the x-axis. And here's where we would find the moment of inertia in our graph. It is the slope of the graph. And number eight. So when we find the moment of inertia, we're finding the moment of inertia of everything, the total of the table and the object that's on the table. So since we first found the moment of inertia of the table by itself, now we can subtract out that inertia from the total inertia, and we're left with the inertia of the object itself.